Hello world, Shelly here, and today's best of 2019 is eye creams and sunscreens, because they rhyme, and pretty much no other reason except I'm running out of things. So we're going to go over my favorite skincare for the under eye area, or the over eye area, just the eye area in general, and then we'll talk about my favorite sunscreens of the year, not necessarily things that were always released in 2019, but the things that I used the most in 2019. So let's get into it. I'll go from fifth place to first, and let's start with eye creams. In fifth place, I have I do have the full size of this, which I'm also almost out of. This is one of the minis I have for travel. It's from It Cosmetics. It's the Bye Bye Under Eye Eye Cream. And I've been using this for several years. The first time I tried it was right after it came out, and I've been using it ever since. I'm probably not going to repurchase it because it has knocked its way down my list as the years have gone on with the other things that I will talk about now, but I do still feel that it is a very nice hydrating under eye cream that helps to decrease the, the look of fine lines underneath. I didn't feel like it gives me like a flat ironed look under my eyes. You know, it's it's not that potent, but it's very moisturizing, and that goes a really long way to plumping up fine lines and making them look less obvious. There's good skincare in it, though the It Cosmetics ingredient lists are always a mile long, which make, makes me kind of question, like, how much of the actives are actually in there, if there's that many of them, but... I do enjoy this eye cream. I've used a lot of it over <laughs> the past few years, and I do recommend it. It is my fifth place choice. In fourth place, this is one I've also had on my list for quite some time. It is from Mario Badescu. It is the Glycolic Eye Cream, and I do want to point out that I have tried their Hyaluronic Acid Eye Cream as well. Did not like it as much as this one. Now, this is another one that I'm getting down to what's left in here. And this is a cream that you would think, being a glycolic product, would be drying. But I just want to show you guys, it's very much like an oil. Once you blend it out, it sinks into the skin really quickly and really deeply, it feels like. And it does definitely help minimize fine lines under the eyes in terms of repairing them. And that I enjoy very much. I also can wear this under makeup, so I can do this as a morning step if I want to. I alternate this into my eye cream routine probably once to twice a week or so. It's still part of my routine. You only need a tiny little bit, so this jar has lasted, well, ever since I bought it. It's probably due for a new one expiration-wise. It does have a number on there. I think it says six months. Well, <laughs> this is much older than that. Uh, but I do enjoy this particular eye cream. I haven't had great luck with Mario Badescu products in general, but I do love this one. In third place for eye creams, this one is almost empty. I'm down to the bottom. It is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost City Shield Eye Serum. Now, this is very, very, very similar to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost moisturizer that you can get. So if you're already using that and you already have that at home, you might not necessarily need to go get this one. This one does have some extra peptides in it that are not in the regular moisturizer. So for that reason, I bought this one. What I use this for is underneath whatever eye cream I'm going to do with my routine or any moisturizer under the eyes because this just, it's kind of like the same way you would use like the Neutrogena Hydro Boost. You would put it down. It's a hyaluronic acid based sort of gel-like serum-ish style of product. And I put those down underneath my moisturizer to give my moisturizer something to, you know, pull moisture into my skin with. So I use this under another eye cream when I'm doing my eye routine and I use it morning and night and I thoroughly enjoy it. I've gone through this whole bottle. It lasts a very long time. I've had this probably the whole year and I'm just now running out of it. Again, you only need a tiny little bit because your under eye area is not that big and so it's going to last you a while. It's not super cheap. I know it's drugstore, but I think it's like 20 bucks, but that's how drugstore prices are getting these days, but keep your eyes out for sales. You can always get sales at the drugstore. Wait till you get a good sale. And I, I really like it. I think it does help to add moisture and with the overall plumping and non-creepiness of my under eye area. 
We're down to my two favorites. I love these pretty much equally. They perform different roles in my routine, but I love them both. And this is a new one because I resisted trying this for a while, and I don't know why. It's not new in terms of when it came out, but it's new to me. It is from Belief, which you know makes my absolute favorite all time of all of life, Moisturizer, the True Cream Moisturizing Balm. This is the Moisturizing Eye Balm. Now, I've gone through, I had three little tubbies of these little tiny guys, so I'm almost done with this one. This is the last one that I've got, and I've already bought the full size, but I can't find it. It's a hot mess over here, if you only knew the mess that is around me. But absolutely love this. I use it morning and night. You can wear it under makeup. Actually, I think all of these you can wear under makeup. Yep, except for first place, which I'll talk about in a second. This is ultra hydrating. And that's really what it's meant for. It's a, it's a moisturizer for your under eye. Uh, it's not really there to be the thing that is correcting dark circles and under eye lines and things like that, but you will get correction of lines through the plumping and moisturizing of your skin. It looks less creepy, looks less liney, and I just, this, my under eye is really dry. Even when the rest of my face is normal, my under eye is always dry, and this has gotten it as close to normal as possible, I think. I've got number one as a combo pack, although really, this is the star. Science Serum Bright and Tight. This is the cousin to Science Serum uh, Tight Eye, which I used for over a year before this came out. And once this came out, I switched to Bright and Tight. And it's little brother, the Moisturize Moisturizer for the under eye. And... I've done a zillion videos on Science Serum and the tie-dye products, and I've got before and after photos of my progress. I take this not only on my under eye, but I also take it up over on the hoods of my lids, and it has tightened up that area significantly. It has brought less droopiness to the outer corners of my eyes. The Bright and Tight, tie-dye and Bright and Tight will both do those functions. The Bright and Tight has additional ingredients that help reduce dark circles. If your dark circles are caused by blood pooling, like broken capillaries, under the eye area. If that's not the cause of your dark, dark circles, then this might not help them as much. But this helps the body to uh, encourage it to take those the, the blood that is pooled under there and remove it and get it out of there, which then you see less purple under your eyes, helps with the drainage, helps with puffiness. So that's the one difference between tight eye and bright and tight is that this has the extra ingredients for dark circles. And I have some dark circles that aren't as dark as they used to be. Thank you, bright and tight. But I could not live without this stuff. This is absolutely 100% one of my favorite skincare necessities of life. This is not a sponsored video. They don't know I'm talking about this today. Uh, I just love this stuff. I, you know, I take before and after pictures. I can see that it works and I don't mind paying for skincare that works. However, sign up for their email list. You can almost always get a 20% off deal from their coupons that they do on their website and through their email. Try code Shelly. I do have a promo code with them. It's not an affiliate link. I don't get paid if you use it. It's just a discount for you guys. And if it's still working, it should give you 20% off. Try it. Eh, can't hurt to try. Uh, but I follow it with my Moisturize Moisturizer. And it works really well. I This is one of the most moisturizing moisturizers I've ever tried. The belief is a little bit less expensive, so I go through more of it, and I kind of save this for my specific bright and tight days. I do my bright and tight, I wish I could say five days a week, because that's a commitment that I strive for, but it's realistically three to five days a week is when I use it in the mornings. It really just depends how busy I am, if I have the extra five minutes to, to kick in. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm just lazy sometimes. <laughs> because really what I do is I put it on before I get dressed and then I get dressed and by the time I'm done getting dressed, I can wash it off. But laziness kicks in, you know, I'm just whatever. Love this stuff. Number one. It's been number one for a very long time in my life. It's one of my favorite skincare items of all times. Let's talk sunscreen. You should wear sunscreen every single day of your life, whether you're going outside of the house or not. If you have windows, you should have sunscreen on. Sun comes in. UV rays 
damage your skin. Some of them give you cancer. Some of them just do photo aging. For vanity purposes, all I care about is the photo aging, which is the things that happens to give you dark spots and wrinkles and crepey skin and texture that you don't want. Of course, I also don't want cancer. So, uh, wear your sunscreen every day. I live on that soapbox and I will never feel bad about that. You should wear your sunscreen every single day. In fifth place, I have a mineral sunscreen from Mad Hippie. This is the 30 plus UVA UVB broad spectrum. It is zinc oxide. And here's the reason I like this. I like it because it's got carrot seed oil, avocado oil, and red raspberry seed oil. It gives it a nice fragrance that is sometimes off-putting in sunscreen. So they make this one smell very nice. Uh, the oils I also find to be incredibly hydrating. If you have very dry skin and you want to wear a sunscreen under your makeup, this one will actually help maintain your hydration and it wears well under makeup. The downside, like most pure mineral sunscreens, it leaves a little bit of a white cast. So it starts out as a cream and blends out and you see it is just a little bit of a white cast. So I really can't wear this one on its own unless I'm putting foundation on top because I'm, I'm pale as it is and then I start to look ghostly if I have a white cast and no foundation on. But if you put foundation on over it, you're not going to see the white cast. It goes away. Oh, it just, it smells very nice and it's very, very hydrating. So Thumbs up to the Mad Hippie. Typically with my sunscreens in the winter, I will wear as low as an SPF 30, but in the summer I like to go SPF 50 or higher. So that is just my personal preference. But let's take a look at number four. This is from Garnier, the Skin Active Moisture Balm. I have the SPF 30 version. They make an SPF 15 version of it as well. There's also another one of these from Garnier in the green bottle that was called... It was anti-dark spot, and I can't think of the name of it, but I ran out of it a while back, and I enjoyed that one too. This is Broad Spectrum SPF 30. It is an antioxidant sunscreen. It is very hydrating. doesn't really modify the finish of your foundation, so it won't go more dewy or more matte, and it sinks into the skin very nicely, and it is nicely moisturizing. It's a cream sort of formula, so I should check it out first. Cream sort of formula that blends out. I'm almost out of it. Blends out really easily, and you see it's just... Very liquidy, very cream, creamy type, and it sinks right into the skin. So pretty much no fragrance, not really any scent to it. I wonder if there's added fragrance. I probably should look that up. I don't know. This is a chemical sunscreen. I generally prefer chemical sunscreens under my makeup because the mineral sunscreens leave a white cast and they can be troublesome. So the ones I'm talking about are the least troublesome in terms of that but I usually do go for chemical sunscreens. I do know some people have sensitivity to chemical sunscreens and prefer mineral for that reason, so that's why I have a little of both. Next up, in third place, this has been a favorite for quite a while as well. It's from Australian Gold. It is the SPF 50 Botanical Sunscreen, Tinted Sunscreen for the face. Now, this is mineral, it's an anti antioxidant sunscreen. It is tinted, however, I do not find that it is too dark for me. Once it blends out, it pretty much looks like nothing. I do prefer to have makeup on over it just because there is a little tint. You can kind of see it's like a skin tone-ish, medium to light skin tone color. And here it is blended out compared to my other hands. So it really doesn't make a huge difference in tint-wise, the color to it. The one thing I like about it being tinted is when you're applying it, you can see very clearly where you've covered and where you've missed, which is important because you don't want to miss any spots. But once it is all blended into the skin, it really doesn't show much color. I think, though, if you are more pale than I am, you might have issues with it being a little too dark. But I don't find that this dries out my skin. In the winter, I often do prefer a more hydrating version because I would say this is not hydrating, but it's not drying. In the winter, because I get dried out and dehydrated so easily, I do feel like I want a more hydrating formula. In the summer, no problem whatsoever, but I can wear this in the winter. It, because it's not drying on me, I just usually opt to go for moisturizing in the winter time. Love the SPF 50 though. In second place, I don't have a bottle of it. I will put a picture on the screen. 
It is the Make P Rem. It is a Korean sunscreen and it is the SPF 50 PA plus 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 plus. I believe it is. I believe it's four pluses. And I'm not going to go too far onto my other sunscreen soap box, but my other sunscreen soap box basically says just don't buy your sunscreens in the United States. We are so far behind on our technology. We have not approved a new sunscreen ingredient since the 80s. The European Union has had more better sunscreen ingredients, especially for anti-aging UVA ray protection for over a decade. We are just foully behind. It is unbelievable. So I, I don't really like U.S. sunscreens anymore. This past summer, I pretty much converted to using European sunscreens or Korean sunscreens. So the Make PRM is one of my favorites. It was my first non-U.S. sunscreen favorite, and it wears wonderfully under makeup. Absolutely no impact on your makeup. Beautiful, not drying at all. I can wear it year-round perfect under makeup and it's SPF 50 and it's got excellent UVA protection as well. We in the U.S. don't rate our UVA protection. Elsewhere, they do. And because we don't rate it, it's you really don't know if you're getting minimal UVA protection or a lot. We just say broad spectrum, which means it's got some UVA and some UVB. I'm oversimplifying, but suffice it to say, I'm pretty much done with trying new American sunscreens. Uh, so the ones here are ones that have been on my list before for the most part, except for the Mad Hippie. It's the newest in my list, but uh, it's because I'm not trying any new ones. I'm doing everything European or Korean. So the Make P Rem, get it on Amazon. It is excellent. My number one favorite, though, I picked it up in Ireland. You can order it on the UK Amazon. Unfortunately, the problem is that a lot of times when you get to the checkout process, the seller will look and see that you are in the United States and then they will cancel your order. So it can be hard to get it. And I haven't found any stores directly that sell it, but I'm still working on that. This one's from La Roche-Posay. Do not be confused. There is one that they sell in the US that has different sunscreen ingredients in the same kind of packaging, but no, I want the European one. This is the Anthelios 50 Plus. It's the Shaka Fluid, the Invisible Ultra Resistant. It's UVB and UVA. It is the top UVA protection that you can get through the European rating system. This stuff, it's got alcohol in it, but as I've said before, it is not necessarily an ingredient that you have to avoid at all costs because if it's formulated correctly, it's not going to be drying, and this is not drying. It's very, very liquidy. You see it's dripping down my hands, but because it's so liquidy, it spreads really easily. It sinks into the skin super quickly and very completely, so you really can go in with makeup and it won't move around. It's already sunk into your skin. It is a really, really, really nice sunscreen, especially if you wear makeup on the daily like I do. It's... One, well, it's my favorite that I've tried European so far. Right now I'm working my way through. This one's almost empty and I want to save it because it's my favorite. I want to save it until it gets warmer out. I only have a little bit left. I'm working through a uh, number seven sunscreen, a facial sunscreen that I really don't like so much. But someday I will do a video on my favorite and not so favorite European sunscreens. Would you guys be interested in that? I know some of you actually are in Europe and you can actually buy these things. Uh, so let me know if you are interested in that. It's a little harder to get your hands on some of them here in the U.S. Uh, but I am very, very fortunate that I am able to travel to Ireland every summer for the past four. And I'll be going back this coming summer as well. I teach a study abroad program over there for six or seven weeks. And that's when I go crazy and buy all my European sunscreens and bring them all home. I'm going to buy like four of these next time because this one's not lasting me. I keep having to mix in other stuff because I, I didn't know if I would like it when I bought it. I just bought a bunch of different ones to try. Anyway, those are my number one favorites of 2019 in the eye creams and sunscreens category. I'm going to have one more video of 2019 favorites. It is going to be my favorite makeup of 2019. So like 
anything. Eyeshadows, blush highlighters, you know, the makeup of the face. So that will be coming up on Friday. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night. Where? Day or night? Choking. Wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Thank you.